Hello everyone, in this video let us take a look at the scripted post function where we will check for the value entered in a select list, a multi-select list. So for this particular example, I want to first uh, share uh, the uh, the use case or uh, what exactly I am trying to solve. So let us say if I have uh, a project in Jira and uh, if I am, let us say, creating a new story or a bug, let us say I create a new story. And of course, for each and every issue, we have a workflow in Jira. Now my requirement is that whenever I move my issue from uh, to do to in progress or to any status, I want to create some uh, subtask automatically. So let us say if I am on this particular story, if I move this to in progress, so the current status is to do, and the moment I change the status to in progress, I want uh, maybe one or two subtasks to be automatically uh, created for me. And of course, uh, you can uh, use a script runner and you can use a post function, but we also want to add a condition. We don't really want to do it uh, every time. So let us first uh, go to the workflow. I'll go to the project settings and then uh, I'll take a look at the workflow that is currently being used with my story. So we can have different workflows, but I just want to do it for story, for example. So if I go to my workflow scheme, I can see here that I'm using this uh, workflow called Software Simplified Workflow. I'll click on the edit for the workflow and I'll basically modify the post function. I'll add a post function to create a new subtask automatically. So we'll do it in two steps. First, I'll uh, add a post function and then we'll add a condition. So I want to do this for my to do to in progress transition. So if I click on the to do step and there is a transition called in progress, I'll click on it and I'll be on my to do to in progress transition where I can add a post function. So let us uh, wait for the screen to load. My Jira instance is a bit slow, but uh, I'm using a test instance with a not very fast database. So we have a post function here and uh, I believe uh, we have some post functions already, but we'll ignore them and we'll add uh, our own custom post function. So if you click on the link on the right hand side, add post function, this is where you can define uh, what you want to do after the transition has happened. And we have a uh, few options here, but the thing that I want to do is uh, script post function using a script runner. And if I click on the add button, it will then let me uh, configure it. So my requirement is to create a subtask. So let us see if we have something that we can uh, use, some ready-made post function. So we have a lot of post functions, which is good because uh, if you're new to script runner, you can uh, use these uh, predefined post functions. And of course, uh, script runner will let you do further customizations, first uh, further configurations if you want. So the thing that I want to do is uh, create a subtask and uh, you, I can select it, then I can uh, configure it further. So I can add a note here that uh, create a subtask automatically. And uh, we'll come back to this condition later, but uh, I want to select the target issue type. So make sure that uh, you're selecting the right uh, uh, valid issue type or the subtask issue type that is relevant for your project. Then you can add a subtask summary you can add something like automatic subtask and uh, you can choose to copy the fields from parent if there are some fields that are common and uh, you can also select the user uh, let us say if you want to create the subtask from let us say a test user as a reporter or you can just leave it blank in that case the current user will be selected and uh, you can also do some additional uh, issue ac actions like you can set target issue summary uh, or you can uh, basically use uh, uh, maybe the, the subtask summary. It is, it is up to you how you want to do it 
or you can uh, display a pop-up success message that the that three subtasks have been created uh, created successfully or uh, uh, let us just do subtask subtask uh, created so we we have a nice confirmation message and uh, we can also do some uh, subtask action uh, like it will probably transition the subtask to the relevant uh, status but we don't we don't really want to do it so i'll add this uh, workflow post function using script runner and then uh, i will uh, publish my workflow so whenever you're making any change in the workflow do not forget to publish your workflow so that your changes are reflected so right now i'm just uh, creating a subtask without any condition but we'll add a condition so once we have a subtask, I can uh, quickly go back to my uh, original issue where I'm working on a story. So I can uh, probably test on an existing uh, workflow or uh, existing issue or I can create a new one. Let us create a new one, a new story. This is a test story. Let us create it quickly. And uh, what we'll now do, we'll, we'll move the issue to in progress just to test whether the subtask are getting uh, created or not. In this case, we just have one subtask. So this is uh, my issue, my story, and I don't have any subtask. If I click on in progress button on top, if my post function is working correctly, then I should get one subtask in my issue. So we have a new message here on top that says uh, subtask uh, created. So we have a nice confirmation. We can close this pop up and uh, we can al also see here that we have this subtask called automatic subtask. So this is good, but I have a requirement. I want basically that uh, in my issue, if I have, let us say, a custom field and I have a specific value set in that particular custom field only then create this uh, subtask so let us say if you're doing onboarding and we have to create multiple activities but we only want to do it when we have an approval or when we have let us say some value checked in a select list only then create it so for this particular example i'll create a select list of multiple type where we'll have multiple options and if one of those options are selected then uh, create this uh, subtask otherwise ignore the post function so for this particular example i'll uh, create first uh, a custom field of uh, type select list multiple value so we have multiple options that user can select so i'll create uh, add a custom field i'll select this option and then uh, I will I'll give this custom field a name. For the sake of this example, I will uh, use uh, something like uh, multiple select. So we know that we are working on a multiple select uh, list. So I'll select this option, select list multiple choice. And uh, the name of the custom field is multi select. We can have option one. Uh, option two, option three, and option four. So it's a very simple uh, example where we want to validate whether these values or one of these values are selected. So I'll add this to my uh, Android uh, default issue screen. I hope this is the screen for my uh, story but i'll also add it to bug just in case we'll save this and uh, if you go back to the original issue hopefully we should have uh, this new field this new custom field so yes we have this field called uh, multi-select now what i want to do is i want to add uh, a condition in the same workflow to check whether this custom field value has either option one, option two, or option three, but not option four. So we'll go to the same transition in progress. 
and uh, we'll go to the post function. We are just doing the same thing, but instead of creating a new post function, we'll modify the one that we just added. So this is the post function. Create a subtask with some re automatic subtask. We'll uh, take a look inside this post function. And we'll add a condition here. I'll copy the code. So this code is actually very simple. I first want to I'll expand this. I'll just make sure the name of my custom field is uh, multi select. So just make sure that the uh, name is correct because uh, based on this your uh, condition will be uh, checked. So if you look at this code, we are first uh, fetching the values that are selected in this uh, custom field. And then we are returning either true or false. If if the option one, two or three is selected. So basically, we are checking for values dot contains. So we'll get this uh, list from this, uh, uh, this, partic this, this particular uh, this particular field this particular variable will hold uh, different values that will be selected and we are checking uh, using uh, contains method. Uh, and uh, we are checking for either option one, or option two or option three. And we are returning true otherwise false. So if the false is returned, then uh, this post functional this post function will not be triggered. So if I click on the update, and uh, I will uh, publish my workflow. And we'll do the same thing. We'll uh, check whether we have this uh, post function getting triggered or not. So I can create a new story or I can just test on the same issue because uh, this is a simplified workflow where all the transitions are global. So hopefully if I click on the in progress here, it should idly trigger the post function if the condition matches. So let us see. So when I click on it, there is no subtask getting uh, created for me. If I go back to the edit, and if I select maybe option four, now option four is selected. And uh, it should not trigger any uh, post function because uh, we are only checking for option one, two and three. So let us uh, do this transition again. So in progress. And uh, so we have uh, some other some other subtask, but they are coming from a different, uh, different uh, post function. And I'm not really using uh, this is not really relevant here, because this is coming from, uh, I believe auto blocks, and we have a video, but we want to check for the automatic subtask. So let me just go back again. And uh, I'll uh, select option one, and option two, maybe. And if I click on update, I'll wait for it to finish. Yep, so this is now correct. And we are getting a lot of uh, subtasks getting created, possibly because uh, we have some other other automation coming from auto blocks. I'll probably show a new issue creation just to validate whether this is working or not. So this time the option one and two are selected. And if I click on in progress, let us see if we have any subtask created. Yes, so we have a new subtask. Uh, and uh, we have this at the very bottom. So this is uh, working because we have option one and two selected. Uh, and let me just create a new story again. So this is a new story. And if I select uh, option four, and if I click on create, so we have a new story with option four selected, and I'll just val validate it again. I personally believe that uh, we should test all the scenarios just to make sure that uh, your customizations are working correctly or not. If I click on in progress, we do not have any subtask. Let us create one more story. 
this is a new story again and this time I'll select uh, option 1, 2 and 3. I'll create it and uh, then we'll transition it to in progress. So let us see if uh, it works. Hopefully it will work. And uh, yes, this is working. And uh, what you can also do, you can uh, go back to the uh, workflow and uh, you can take a look at the post function again. So if you go to the same transition, and by the way, since it's a, it is a simplified workflow, we have global transitions and uh, you can actually look at uh, all these steps, but the transition IDs are same. So it means that uh, you can, if you click on the in progress button again and again, it will trigger the transition. It will be the same transition and the post function will be triggered. So if you if you click on the post function again, and if you take a look at uh, this, uh, this nice little uh, messages here, it says that uh, no failures in the last six executions. So if you click on it, you can see some log. You can also do some logging if you want in your uh, in your code. Uh, you can also take a look at uh, the payload just to understand uh, for this particular issue what was the issue key and uh, you know some of the values. If you want to take a look at uh, if you want to do some troubleshooting or if you just want to understand. You can also take a look at the timing, which is also good. So this is uh, basically an example where you can use a script runner to do a post function, but with some conditions. And uh, the conditions uh, in this case could be basically anything, but we used custom field values to fetch them first and to check whether they are uh, what we want and only then trigger a transition. So I hope uh, this uh, video was uh, useful. Thank you very much.